When most people think about group therapy, they have a stigma that's only for AA or simple support groups. Not that many people even consider joining a group when deciding to see a therapist. Most of this fear centers from not wanting to tell other people our problems. However, group therapy can have all the benefits of an individual session plus more. The main reason people come to see a therapist like myself is because they have a problems with relating to others. It may be from a spouse, coworker, or family member. But either way, most people think that others are the cause of their own suffering. A group format is an ideal and supportive place that allows for confronting your own unknown behaviors that are causing problems in your life. Dr. Irvin Yalom has spent the majority of his career working with groups. He has found 11 curative factors in the group process. I'm only going to go in two in depth, but I'll show you all 11. And uh, if you want to see the other ones, just comment in the video below and press the like button and let me know. So the first one is an installation of hope. This is faith that the treatment mode will be effective for you. Clients come in hoping that they'll have positive change. The second is universality, a demonstration that we are not alone in our own misery or our problems. The third is imparting useful information. This is like the psychoeducational piece, giving information about their mental illness, psychodynamics, or whatever is the focal point of the group. Then there's altruism, allowing for the opportunity to rise out of oneself to help someone else, the feeling of being useful. Corrective recapitulation of primary family group, experiencing transference relationships growing out of a primary family experience, providing the opportunity to relearn and clarify your own distortions. Development of socializing techniques, basically social learning or the development of interpersonal skills. There's imitative behavior, taking on the manner of group members who function adequately. Catharsis, or the opportunity for expression of strong affect. Existential factors, or recognition of basic features of existence through sharing with others. Ultimate aloneness and ultimate death. There's more in a video right there. There's direct advice, receiving and giving suggestions for strategies for handling problems. And lastly, interpersonal learning, or receiving feedback from others and experimenting with new ways of relating. So the first one we're going to look at more in depth is universality. One assumption about our own problems is that we are alone in our own misery. A group process shows us that this is far from true. In fact, most group members, when giving themselves up to the group process, see that the more vulnerable the wound, the more likely they'll be able to empathize with others. Many individuals enter therapy with a disquieting thought that they are unique in their own wretchedness. They are somehow alone and there are certain unacceptable problems, thoughts, and impulses and fantasies that they deal with. To some extent, this is true for all of us, but many clients, because of their extreme isolation, have a heightened sense of their own uniqueness in their problems. I think this is why shows like Always Sunny Philadelphia are so popular. The characters there enact traits and behaviors that we all think about from time to time, but aren't really socially acceptable. The second curative factor we're gonna look more in depth is the development of socializing techniques. A group is like a microcosm of the real world. Given enough time, group members will begin to be themselves. They will interact with the group members as they interact with others in their social sphere. See, we create the same interpersonal universe that we have always inhabited. In other words, clients will, over time, automatically and inevitably begin to display their maladaptive behaviors in therapy groups. So if someone's afraid to share, over time, the group will call them out for it. If someone's overly arrogant, over time, the group will call that person out. This is more brought home with the Johari window. The Johari window claims that we have four selves. There is a public self, which is known to ourselves and everyone else. This is the self that you put out there to everyone. A private self that's only known by you. This is the self that really dances from the mirror, if you're like me. There's the hidden self or the unconscious. This self is unknown to you and everyone else. Things you do that you are not aware of. You can unlock the unconscious self by seeing a one-on-one -on -one therapist usually. And the last self are behaviors and reactions that are evident to others but blind to us. This is the blind self. You may be overly afraid of conflict, or you may be overly challenging to others. People in your real life might not tell you this, but in a group format, it is a very supportive place where this direct advice is allowed and even promoted. I hope you guys liked the video. Please press that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. And check out these other videos on therapy. And as always, I will see you guys next time. See ya.